Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, we're going to be doing a fun art project today, printmaking from home. So um, I've been I've done printmaking with my classes at school. Not every class, but um, like my seventh graders do a big printmaking project this year. Um, and quite a few of my kids have done printmaking. So printmaking is where you draw or you you would draw or carve something into one surface and then transfer it to another. And normally what this does is it allows you to make multiples of the same thing. Um, we won't exactly be making multiples um, in a sense. Well, you'll see. Um, but you'll be able to make your drawing on one surface and then transfer it to another, which is very cool. Um, you will need a plastic bag, like um, like a lunch baggie or um, like a freezer bag. Um, I didn't try using a grocery bag, but I'm sure that would work just fine. You need washable markers. Um, the markers for color have to be washable. They won't transfer. Um, you can use one Sharpie permanent marker if you want to um, kind of outline the drawing on the baggie. I'll show you. Um, and then that way, each time you're not drawing something new, you're just coloring it in. Um, you'll need water, a paintbrush, and paper. If you have kind of like a little bit of thicker paper, that would be great, but if not, it's okay. Um, so these are my examples. So printmaking can be a little bit messy. So it's okay if it gets a little smudgy because each print is gonna be different and you're gonna keep learning from your mistakes. So um, like here, here, and here, I used just way too much water, so my print got really smudgy and runny. Um, these these were more successful so um, I'm gonna show you how I did that and hopefully we will have great success <clears throat> so artists like to use printmaking a lot when they are when they make multiples so Andy Warhol when we, we did an art piece recently inspired by him oh the emoji one um, he would use print the printmaking technique so with your permanent marker you can draw Um, whatever you like. I'm going to make a flower just because um, it's spring and there's sun coming through my windows. Even though today doesn't seem like it's going to be as warm and sunny. Okay. So the permanent marker is going to stay on the bag. It will not transfer onto your paper. What will transfer is the coloring that, that you do. So I'm gonna just make sure this is dry. Okay, air that out. Okay, so then we're going to use a colorful, our colorful markers, washable, make sure they're washable. And when you color, you'll notice that like, it doesn't look like you've colored it all in and you're kind of like, oh, there's dots here and there's empty space here, it's okay. Once we add water to your paper, that's going to absorb the marker color and then you will, um, it'll look somewhat more filled in. You'll see what I mean. Um, so I'm just gonna color these in. I wouldn't take too much time coloring, so you have to be somewhat quick about it, just so that way, um, I mean the water re-wets it actually, so it wouldn't be a big deal. But I would, I, I don't know, I haven't experimented on what happens if the marker kind of just sits on there. So drawing your image in permanent marker is nice because you can just draw it once and then you're essentially gonna just color it in to make a new print. So that's how you could make multiples. I did not do that for this. So I just kept like wiping my um, bag clean and then drawing something new. So that's an option too. Like if you wanna have different things and you only have one bag, just don't use the permanent marker and you can just draw a new thing on your on your bag every time. That's what that's what I was doing. But actually, so I made this whole video and then I was like, oh my gosh, I could um I know what I could do to make this a little bit easier for everyone is use a permanent marker to outline a drawing and then you just color in. But I can show you too how oh I can hear my little baby making some noise out there. Um, okay, so now this is colored in. Now it's time for the water. So I'm gonna take my water. You don't need too much water like at all. And I think my biggest issue with these prints was that I was using way too much water. So I'm going to get most of the water off my brush. 
and just make a super light coat of water with my brush. For my kids, they know, oh my gosh, your brush has, look at, look at that bad hair day. If we were watercolor painting, that would be a big no-no. <laughs> my brush is asking for water. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna also use my hand and make sure there's no puddles because puddles are what, what gets you in trouble. Okay, so then I'm going to lay my bag down and just carefully with my with one finger, I'm gonna go on all of my marker spots to make it transfer onto my paper. So the water from the paper is gonna pick up the marker and keep it onto my paper when I lift the bag up. Okay, so then once I've touched all my petals, I'm gonna pull up and there's my flower. Um, you'll notice that obviously there's a space because of my Sharpie. Um, <clears throat> so like I said, if you don't want there to be a space and you want to draw something woo, different each time, um, you're welcome to just draw your picture. And then your other option would be, so I'm going to make one more print so you guys can see. Um, let's do blue this time. So if you, my, I still have some resi like residue on my thing, so I might just use my brush. If I was a nice clean artist, I would have a towel on hand, but I don't, so I'm just going to wipe that off. Okay, so now my picture's all clean, and notice how the Sharpie doesn't come off. Um, what colors do I want to do? I'm going to make this flower just all blue, I think. You can also layer your prints, so I'll show you what I mean by that. So, um, like you could do a print next to it, but you could also have them overlapping. So maybe I'll overlap this one a little bit. So I'm gonna color my petals all in again. And remember, these are optional. I just want you guys to have um, different choices. When you wanna make art, you can look through the videos, find something that interests you. Um, your drawing obviously doesn't have to be a flower. It could be anything that, that you want to be. I would stay away from things that are too detailed just because, as you can see with printing them, um, it's just a little bit challenging to get something with really small details. Also, anything you print would be backwards, so I wouldn't use any words because it will print. It's almost like a mirror. It prints it, um, prints it backwards. Okay. So I'm also going to show you that if you want to add something that's not originally on here, like say I want to add some leaves to my flowers, like you can do that without having any Sharpie outline. That's totally fine. Um, so we'll do one leaf there and one down here. Okay. So. This is how I was doing my other prints. I just kept using one bag, drawing on it, wiping it clean, drawing something else, wiping it clean, and so on. Okay, so I'm gonna make my wet spot, but remember we're not gonna make it too wet. I'm going to brush off, and I can feel the where it was too wet on my paper. Like if it's coming up on your hands, definitely too too wet so okay much better then I'll take my baggie and it's okay if I overlap okay and I just want to make sure that I'm touching every petal just to make sure and you, you have to be delicate because your baggie is plastic and kind of slippery so you don't want it to to move oh I just heard a baby sneezing okay and then you're gonna lift up. Ooh, so that one was like a little bit lighter. Maybe I didn't push down quite hard enough. Um, so that's a little bit of a lighter print, or maybe I needed a tiny bit more water, but every time I, I'll show you what it looks like if we use too much water. So I'll do one last one with too much water, and then I will, I will leave you all to experiment for yourself. So I'm just gonna color right over what I had. And I'll try to be a little quick with this one. So in the first video I made, um, I had a lot, 
I made quite a few mistakes when I actually it was funny that my first print was really good and then my other ones were like not as good after that so I had kind of beginner's luck um, okay so I'm doing this one super quick but I just wanted to show you what happens if you do too much water so then you can recognize when that happens okay this will be an interesting looking flower so I'm going to take my brush and remember overlapping looks cool and is fun so don't stress about you know not having space okay so I didn't rub my paper off and so I'll show you what it looks like if you maybe use too much a little too much water and watch in this case it looks really cool and then I can just I'll just stop trying <laughs> um, because sometimes when you break the rules, you get amazing results. So play with this as you wish. Woo! So you can see here what happens when there's too much water is you get that like smeary look right there. Um, but it also looks really cool. And I think the more prints you have on your paper and if you really fill it up, the cooler that your art piece will be. Um, so I hope you guys just really have fun with this. Do whatever kind of design you want, whatever makes you happy. And remember, it's all about experimenting and having fun. So I hope you guys have a great day. And I will um, see you tomorrow.